Hey guys, it's Noxious Scythe. I just watched Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. This is a 2021 MCU movie directed by Daniel... Let's see. Let me go read it out. Dustin Daniel Cretton. Um, and right off the bat, this is sort of my favorite type of movie. It's basically just dumb fun with pretty decent pacing. And MCU movies in general have pretty good pacing. The second half's a little bit um, slower, but it still does eventually get going. Um, so I, I didn't. I was gonna say the score. I don't want to say the score yet, but like the score I'm giving it is typically my preferred movie to watch the most because it is just blind dumb fun. Um, so yes, yeah, Shang Chi. Uh, the obvious comparison is Doctor Strange, and the other obvious comparison is Black Panther. Doctor Strange, because the magic is basically the same thing, there's a lot of the same universe stuff going on, and um, the same magical powers, and like, well not the exact same, but there's a lot of the characters as well, a lot of cameos and stuff. Um, but Black Panther as well, because it's like, it's for foreign, foreign um, representation, right? So. You know, Black Panther is obviously for black people, and it goes for that very traditional African um, mythology. And this goes for that traditional Chinese mythology, so it's not 100% real or anything. Um, but it's just like based off of folklore and mythology and stuff. Um, so yeah, basically, excuse me for not knowing the characters' names and the actors' names. It is, you know, Chinese people. Uh, it's just, you know, there's, you know, white people have names like Joe, Stan, Nick. But they usually, Chinese people usually have names like Zhu Wang, Li, and stuff, and it's just, I'm not, you know, I'm not obviously not used to it, so I will not be able to remember all these names. But basically, the plot here is, um, Shang-Chi's father, he's the real driving force of this. Basically, Shang-Chi's father is a very greedy and ambitious, low-key kind of psychopath, um, and he was lucky enough to come into possession of the Ten Rings, which are kind of unexplained. But I don't actually care. I, I don't care. I don't know how the Ten Rings work, but they grant you a bunch of magical powers. They, you can like throw them away and call them back to you. They do all sorts of things. Uh, they, get, they grant you like unnaturally long life as well. Like Shang-Chi's father is like a thousand years old or something. Um, and eventually Shang-Chi's father gets tired of all the money and power and wealth and he wants more. He still wants more. So he goes to this hidden village that is guarded by a woman, and the woman and him duel in a pretty cool dance-like duel. And they eventually fall in love, and they have two children, Shang-Chi and... I forget the, the sister's name. But, um... And, uh, basically he retires his rings, and he stops being a murderous psychopath. Uh, but eventually the mother is murdered, and he goes back to his old ways, and, you know, he just starts... He starts this corporation called the Ten Rings, full of trained assassins. He trains his son, and then the daughter copies all of the boys that are doing the training. Uh, and he becomes an assassin, she becomes an assassin. And he, the father is hell-bent on trying to... Well, the, I don't want to spoil it. The, the plot changes a lot, and that's one of my uh, issues, I would say. So the plot just keeps on changing, I won't spoil things. Uh, but yeah, basically... Shang-Chi, oh that's a loud firecracker, Shang-Chi, his father's a bad guy, and he needs to stop his father because he's a bad guy, simple as that. Uh, okay, so let's hop into the good stuff, okay? So first of all, the martial arts, amazing. The bus scene, amazing. This has some of the best action in the MCU by far. Um, it's just incredible. I rewatched the scenes a couple of times straight after finishing the movie because that's how cool they were. It's basically, he's basically Asian John Wick. It's crazy. I love it. Um, so martial arts are awesome. The general hand-to-hand -hand combat is awesome. I don't know what the hell the point the point of that white guy with only one arm was, but he was pretty cool as well, even though he was total, you know, I don't know. Marvel just has such a weird kink for creating these minor villains that just exist for some reason. Like, another example is like, uh, what's that one from Thor Ragnarok? The executioner. They just create these weird ass minor villains. So I don't know what the hell the point of him was, but he definitely created a very cool scene in the bus. So I mean, the bus scene is just awesome. The movie's worth watching for the bus scene alone. Um, love the music. I think it's quite relevant, and I think it's like relatable music. I, I, you know, 
it's like this movie's a little bit whitewashed, to be honest. If you don't know, that, know what that means, it's basically culturally appropriating, I believe, right? If I'm getting that right. This is actually not that Asian of a movie, basically. It is just an American movie with a bunch of um, Asian actors and stuff. It's a little bit like Mulan, right? So it's actually not that traditionally Chinese or anything. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but at the same time, I do like the music choices. It is very relevant and relatable for all audiences. Hopefully Chinese people are satisfied with this movie. I don't know, maybe they don't even care. It's not like I care when white people movies are good. But then again, Asian people don't really have the same representation in Marvel, so... Who knows? I'm not, I'm getting pretty political, but I'm not really, you know, that's not why I like the movie. I just, I watched it because it's a Marvel movie. Um, had a really fun time with it. Well, let's hop into the negatives now. First of all, exactly like Black Panther, um, the villain is far more interesting and three-dimensional than the main character. Shang-Chi has some good action, but he doesn't actually provide any character, like, try and describe Shang-Chi to me right now. Do it. You can't do it. Like, there's nothing, there's no discernible traits about him. Like, Tony Stark, charismatic, eccentric billionaire, playboy, you know? Shang-Chi, um, he's, a uh, he's a stoic assassin who unfortunately had his mother taken away from him, you know? His, his father's a dick. There's nothing, there's nothing notable about Shang-Chi himself whatsoever. The villain, I mean, Killmonger's still better than this villain. This is the real Mandarin, and this movie has tons of ties to Iron Man 3, by the way. Um, so, the real Mandarin is really cool. I like him a lot. Uh, he's, like, he's a different, he's a different kind of, like, psychopath. I didn't, like, Thanos is a psychopath, right? But not really. This is like a, he's, this guy's a real psychopath. He does, he's, he's unhinged. So... I thought he was a really cool villain, and he's far, far more cooler than his son and daughter, unfortunately. Well, or not unfortunately, it's up to you. Uh, but yeah, Shang-Chi himself, you know, the movie's titled after him, so you expect the main character to be a little bit cooler. Shang, he's a nice guy, I guess, but, you know, nice, getting, being nice doesn't really get you anywhere. It's just a uh, quality everyone has by default, or so they say at least. So yeah, Shang-Chi, not that interesting himself. Um, Kate was very funny. She's a comedy relief. Unfortunately, they ran out of stuff to do with her, so by the time they get to the village, they just don't know what to do with her at all, and she just starts doing some dumb stuff with a bow and arrow. Uh, the third act, the third act is way over the top. It is so unnecessary. Uh, it's, they just got, he got carried away. The director clearly got carried away here. The martial arts carry the combat, and the hand-to-hand -hand combat, is, is, that's all you need, okay? We don't need... If the, the final battle should have been more emotionally impactful than it was. It should have been about Shang and his father having some epic battle. Um, and it's like supposed to be emotional along the way because it's supposed to be a fight to the death. But really, it's just like a big glorified CGI fight with some big dumb bat creature and its army of generic looking bats. And then there's some World of Warcraft cloud serpent. It's just, it's so crazy and over the top, I just don't get it. I don't understand why they went that direction. They had, like, they had such opportunity for emotional impact, and they just got rid of it all with the typical Marvel one-liner jokes, and, yeah. So, Shang-Chi is a popcorn movie. It's, there's zero substance to it whatsoever. It is purely for fun. I do recommend it. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, personally, because I don't think it's, like, some masterpiece movie or anything. It's not a piece of art, that's for sure. But it's, it's a fun time. I think the villain's super cool. I think the music's awesome. I think the action's great. So it's a fun time. Regardless of how the story plays out or this and that, it's a fun time. So yeah, I do recommend Shang-Chi. Definitely recommend it. And I will be watching this one again.